Welcome to our lecture online. We're now finally ready to find the reflection and transmission coefficients. What are those? The reflection coefficient R is a fraction or percentage of the particles that are reflected of the potential step. The transmission coefficient T is the percentage or the fraction of the particles that actually are transmitted past the potential step. And how do we find that? Well, we find that as follows. R, the reflection coefficient, has to be a ratio of B squared over A squared. You say, well, why does it have to be? Well, it turns out that A squared is the constant in front of the term that represents all the particles moving to the right in region 1. B is the constant in front of the term that reflects all the particles or represents all the particles that are moving to the left in region 1. And the ratio of b to a should be the reflection coefficient. But what about b squared over a squared? Well, the reason why it's b squared over a squared is because the probability of finding a particle in region 1 depends upon the wave function squared. So it's not actually b over a that we're looking for, but b squared over a squared that we're looking for. Because after all, it's going to be a ratio of the probabilities, not a ratio of the wave functions. So that explains why it's b squared over a squared. And since we found out what b was in terms of a in the previous video, let's go ahead and plug that in here and see what we get. So r, the reflection coefficient, now is going to be b squared, which is this term squared. So we have k1 minus k2 divided by k1 plus k2 quantity squared times a squared all divided by a squared. The a squares cancel out, which means that r, the reflection coefficient, is simply going to be a ratio of k1 minus k2, which is the difference of the wave numbers in region 1 and region 2, divided by k1 plus k2. And, of course, that's going to be this term squared. There we go. And then, of course, what we could do is we, we could replace k1 and k2 in terms of the expressions for the energy of the particle and the potential of the step. And then we have the reflection coefficient in terms of the energy of the particle and the reflection of the step. Maybe that sounds like we have to do a video in the future for that. Now, here, what we're going to do is find out what the transmission coefficient is. Now, again, it'll be a ratio of the square of the constant in region 2 to the constant in region 1 here, A. Now, A represents all the particles that are moving to the right in region 1. C, or this term right here, represents all the particles that move past the step, potential step, and continue on to the right in region 2. Now, why K2 over K1? Well, not only do we have to consider the probabilities, we also have to consider that there's a difference in the energy and the wave number. So in other words, since we have a different wavelength here as we compared to over here, we have to compensate for that. It's kind of synonymous to what we do when we have what we call refraction, when light or electromagnetic radiation enters another medium, the wave then the wavelength is going to be longer, and therefore we have to take into account the difference in the index of refraction, which is basically a ratio of the differences in the wavelength. We have to do the same here because now we're transmitting basically into a different region where the wavelength of the particle will be different, and we have then have to compensate for that as well using K2 over K1. So now that we know that, we plug that the value in here for C, Let's see, C is equal to that in terms of A. So now we can write that the transmission is equal to K2 times C squared, which is going to be 2K1 divided by K1 plus K2 quantity squared. And that would be times A squared divided by K1 times A squared. The reason why we put absolute value signs around it because with probability functions, we always have that as the absolute value. Now, a squares cancel out, so we're left with, let's see, k2 goes in here, k1 will cancel out that, k1, so we have the transmission is equal to 2 times k2, oh, be careful, I have to be careful, because this is k1 squared, and this is just k1, so we still have a k1 there, and, um, 
2 is squared, so let's make that into a 4. So we have 4k1 and then k2 divided by this thing is still squared, so we have k1 plus k2 squared. So it might be easier to write that. Let me see if I did that right. So we have 4k1 squared divided by k1, which is 4k1 times k2, and that looks correct over here. So now we have an expression that gives us the transmission coefficient. Reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient. The question is, is that correct? Well, we can do a check, and how do we check that? We can check it by realizing that t plus r must equal 1. If t represents the fraction of all the particles that are transmitted, and r represents the fraction of the particles that are reflected, well, together they should add up to 1, all of the particles. So therefore, if we add these two together, they should add up to 1. So let's see if that's correct. So t is equal to this. So we have 4 k1 k2 divided by the quantity k1 plus k2 squared. And we add that to r, which is this right here, which is k1 minus k2 quantity squared divided by k1 plus k2 quantity squared, that should add up to 1, right? The question is, is that indeed correct? So I replaced t and r by what t and r are equal to in terms of the wave numbers. Okay, let me uh, work this out. That's all over common denominator. So in the numerator, we should get 4k1, k2. And if we multiply this out, we get plus k1 squared minus 2k1, k2 plus k2 squared all divided by the quantity k1 plus k2 quantity squared. It's a common denominator. And let's see here. We have a 4k1, k2 minus 2k1, k2. So this ends up being k1 squared plus 2k1, k2 plus k2 squared all divided by k1 plus k2 quantity squared. So the denominator stays the same, and when I add the, these two uh, terms right here, a 4k1, k2, and a minus 2k1, k2, that becomes a plus 2k1, k2. Now I can factor the numerator, which means that this will be equal to the quantity k1, let's see, k1 plus k2 quantity squared divided by k1 plus k2 quantity squared. Ah, uh, yes, and that, of course, equals 1. To see what I just did, if I take the numerator and factor it, I get k1 plus k2 squared, because if you multiply this out, you get this. So now you can see that, yes, indeed, the numerator and denominator are equal, and it's equal to 1, which means that we gave this check, which means that these two expressions for the transmission and the reflection coefficients appear to be correct. And that's how it's done.